And it's amazing to me how many times I've heard this. I can't afford to retire. And I always ask, well, what do you mean? Tell me more. And it's often followed by famous last words. Well, I read an article once that said I need to have blah, blah, blah for retirement. And I think that's looking at it the wrong way. Instead of being focused on needing a certain dollar amount at retirement that really has no waiting, it's a more important to be focusing on what are you going to be doing in retirement and then working the math backwards to find out exactly how much money you need. It's possible that you are inflicting more damage on your finances by tricking yourself into thinking you're making reasonable decisions when maybe you're not. So what do I mean by that? We like to think that things beyond our control, like job layoffs, market downturns, big unanticipated expenses, those are the biggest driving forces for derailing our planning efforts and making achieving a secure retirement a challenge. So think of it just like one more cookie won't hurt, right? And then every time you walk into the kitchen, you grab another cookie and pretty soon you're telling yourself, next week I'll eat better <laughs> because you've eaten all the cookies in the batch. So today I want to go through six examples of the kind of lies we tell ourselves that can dramatically sabotage our chances for retirement success. So you're going to notice a little bit of theme in all of our videos. We talk a lot about mindset. And if you want to learn more about how to change your mindset and unlock even more possibilities to be on the right track for planning for retirement, I highly encourage you to click the link below to sign up for a free copy of our new book, Dream Architecture. I'm Amber Knips, Wealth Advisor out of Fairmont and Jackson, Minnesota, and I specialize in working with high net worth individuals who are at or nearing retirement. We believe everyone has the right to realize that their dreams are possible, and we use that as the focus when working with our clients and helping them plan for their future. So I know what you're probably thinking, but Amber, all of those things are affecting my account balances. How can they not be affecting my retirement plans? If you have a properly designed and diversified portfolio, the day-to-day -day movements of the markets are not driving your long-term success. So if done properly, your funds are all reacting a little bit differently to market volatility and potentially even taking advantage of market movements. So instead of focusing on what the Dow or the S&P 500 are doing, you should be focusing on what you can be doing and what you can control. So things like what can you do to stay on track? What information, both positive and negative, are you feeding yourself? So today we will go through the six lies that you may be telling yourself. So then you can work on changing your mindset and focusing on what's most important. So the first lie is I can't afford it. And it's amazing to me how many times I've heard this. I can't afford to retire. And I always ask, well, what do you mean? Tell me more. And it's often followed by, Famous last words, well, I read an article once that said I need to have blah, blah, blah for retirement. And I think that's looking at it the wrong way. Instead of being focused on needing a certain dollar amount at retirement that really has no waiting, it's more important to be focusing on what are you going to be doing in retirement and then working the math backwards to find out exactly how much money you need. I can think of two different couples that I've had conversations with. One they have huge retirement travel goals. They want to travel overseas. They have all of these different things they want to see. They have big trips planned. So for them, they're going to need a lot of money and they know it. So they've planned accordingly so they can do all the things that are important to them. And then I can think of another couple that they traveled a lot for work. They've done a lot of the things and they're like, now in retirement, you couldn't get me on an airplane. I just want to stay and enjoy my family, my grandkids, my friends, and I don't need a ton of funds. So two very different people and couples. But when we look at their numbers, those are very different too. So if you just Google how much money I need for retirement, it could be way too much or way too little depending on you. So that's why we have our clients work through the dream architect process to figure out exactly what you need, not exactly what some, someone's writing an article or what Google thinks you might need. The other lie I often hear is, there's plenty of time to save later. And this is really important because the longer you put off saving for retirement, 
the more difficult it will be to save. Time being on your side is one of your biggest financial assets, and you might not even realize it. The single best thing you can do for your finances is realize how important that is and take advantage of it. You know, when you're thinking about time being on your side, I've never sat with someone, you know, when they're at or nearing retirement and they're like, oh, I've saved way too much money. Most of the time it's, I wish I would have saved sooner. So when we're thinking about building money for retirement, you know, oftentimes it might be, I'm really looking forward to later in my career when I have much more money, it's going to be so easy to save. And, you know, logically thinking you're right, but the hard thing is the more money you make, the more your expenses tend to go up. So you're not going to magically wake up one day and say, I have so much extra money, I'm going to start saving that. You need to get in the habit of gradually saving, especially every time you get a raise or maybe a nice bonus of increasing the amount of savings. Let's say we work through the dream architect process and your goal is to save a million dollars for retirement. If you started saving for retirement when you're 25, you'd have to contribute around $6,500 a year to reach that goal by age 65. Instead, if you waited until you're 45, cause you're like, I'm gonna make all this extra money then, and maybe you will and you do, but when you're 45, you actually have to contribute over $28,000 a year just to make a million dollars by retirement. So being able to get ahead of that and save sooner and save more anytime you can is only going to give you more flexibility in retirement. And I think that's safe to say something you will not regret. The next lie I hear really often is, especially given market volatility, like we've been seeing this year is, I'll save more when the market improves. And there's a couple things on that that's important to touch on is one, now is a great time to be saving for retirement because you're getting a discount. So just like when Target comes out and says they're having a discount, people flock in. You don't run from the store saying no way. You go and you take advantage of that. Maybe some things you've been thinking about that now you feel a little bit better about purchasing. So think of that with the markets. You're buying a discount, you're getting even more shares than you would have before. So you're being a smart spender. So no one can predict the market. So if you're looking and waiting for things to only perfectly improve and your investments only to go up, that's going to be really difficult. But if you invest on a regular basis, especially over a long period of time, the general smart stock market has done historically it's, it's seen many increases. So you should historically experience more ups than downs. So investing for the long haul and not getting stressed about the day-to-day -day movements of the markets. One of the most common lies I probably hear that people believe is that they should defer taxes as long as possible. So this one can really wreak havoc on one's retirement. So remember the longer you defer taxes, the more uncertainty that's going to arise with how much you'll have to pay. It's a big misconception that you'll be in this much lower tax bracket in retirement because with all of the planning that we do for clients, oftentimes we see clients are in the same or potentially higher tax bracket. So if you only save in a pre-tax retirement account, everything that comes out, you have to pay taxes on. So it's really a waterfall effect. The more that comes out, the more social security is taxed and the higher your tax bracket goes. I had a conversation the other day with someone who's retiring at the end of the year. And we were talking about, well, what will happen? What will that look like? Where will the funds come from? And I was recommending a mix from each of their different types of retirement accounts, as well as joint account and not just using the after tax first. And he was really surprised. He was like, why wouldn't we just use the joint account first? I really want to pay the least amount of tax I can. All I do is pay taxes, right? Sometimes that's how we feel. So we put an analysis together of what it would look like if he only took from the after-tax funds or if he took from a mix. And he was really shocked by the results that he would run out of money much sooner and potentially have a change in lifestyle by not being tax efficient. So we showed the rate he's consistently been in and what he would be if he followed our strategy. And he was shocked by the difference tax planning can make. So what we do is focus on the least amount of tax over time 
not necessarily the least amount of tax each year if you have tunnel vision on, but trying to focus on the long term. And that's why tax planning is so important, especially while you're working. It's not just something you should work through in retirement. So it's so important to work through that with an advisor and a tax professional that you trust to help you get the maximum spendable income in retirement. Another lie I hear frequently is you shouldn't retire until your mortgage is paid off. And so many people are hesitant to carry a mortgage into retirement, but the leverage on that, if you have an attractive interest rate, could be really valuable. You know, it might not make sense in every case, depending on your interest rate, but it's always worth checking and weighing out the benefits of saying, should I pay off my mortgage? What tax implications are that going to have? Or should we just continue paying that on a regular basis? Maybe getting the deductions that you've been getting. You know, especially as we move forward, it it's something worth looking at as you get into retirement. If your expectation of returns over time are greater than your mortgage interest rate, it could be advantageous to keep that. You know, same with if you're looking at purchasing an additional home or changing your existing home, it might be worth looking and saying, well, what makes the most sense for me? Because it might feel good to have your home paid off, but now you're losing assets that were growing for you and potentially creating more income. It's a lot more difficult to get that out of your home once it's paid off. And the last line, probably one of the most important to consider, is that retiring will make you feel permanently happier. And while I agree that retirement can definitely make you happy, it's not exactly the magic end all formula. So if you're looking for, you know, eternal long-term happiness, retirement may not be the perfect answer. Just because just like with our, any new shiny toy or thing that we buy, the excitement will fade. So it will give you the freedom to do things on your own terms and focus on what's most important, which is fabulous. But keeping in mind, there's always going to be lingering anxieties, you know, things that you can't escape. So instead of meetings and deadlines and emails, your worries may shift to your health, your friends and family's health. And there's always going to be something you know, to think about and to worry about. So it's important to make sure you're not just focusing on what you're retiring from, but focusing on what you're retiring to. So having a purpose for your day-to-day, -day, things to look forward to, and maybe that's volunteering or maybe it's spending time with friends and family members and doing a lot more of those types of things that you couldn't do before, but making sure you have that plan as part of your retirement planning. So like I mentioned before, changing your mindset is crucial for retirement. We're all guilty of getting stuck in the busy of the day-to-day -day and all of the things that we might lose sight of our future because we get stuck in that narrow focus. But it's so important to think a little bit farther. So I highly recommend you check, click the link below to request a free copy of our new book, Dream Architecture, to help you build a retirement beyond what's possible.